Do you know Habib Tanbir? Habib Tanbir, a legendary figure in 20th century Indian theater, was a Hindi and Urdu playwright, director, and actor. In 1959, he established a kind of a new theater, Naya Theater, through which he introduced a kind of outstanding works that drew on the culture and history of the Chhattisgarh natives. Agra Bajar, Charandas Chor, Bahadur the wine cellar and the living tale of Hidma were some of his notable works. In Habib Tanbid's play Charandas Chor which was written in Chhattisgarhi, a kind of a narrative uh, which is from Chhattisgarh, a native language, the langu language of Chhattisgarh closely related to Hindi, can be called a kind of a dark comedy. In fact, this was never written in words as the performers were illiterate and after several performances, it was taken the present form. Tanbir used folk actors from Chhattisgarh who contributed their heritage, culture and dialect to the performance, making it um, uh, a kind of a new type. And that it was a kind of a, a writing which is Santami cult, the practice of truth in the name of God. The very concept of the hero is built on contradictions and paradoxes, but with the key principles of Satnami, that is, truth is God. Here, Chorundas is Satnami, a seeker of truth, and that's quite intriguing. Chorundas Chor, here Chor means thief, own him the Fringe first award at Edinburgh International Drama Festival in 1982, and in 2007 it was included in the Hindustan Times list of India's best literary works since independence in the field of drama. This most well known of Tanbit's particular this drama tells the tale of a folk hero who plunders the wealthy in the manner of Robin Hood and eludes the law until he encounters one obstacle. He cannot surmount his own dedication to the truth, being Satnami. So despite being a thief, the title character Chorundas is genuinely honest, sympathetic and truthful. The play Chorundas Chor can only be understood as the simultaneous assembly of truth and lie in a man who becomes a true Satnami en route to his life, even embraces death for the sake of truth, for the sake of akin to God. Welcome to all. You are watching Edis English literature and I am Ordhan Dude. Today we will be talking about the play Chorundas Chor by Habib Tanbir. In fact, this particular drama has drawn the interest of the students, the simple readers as well as the scholars. The main character Chorundas Chor is a kind of a thematic complexity. Overall, I will carry out a critical analysis on that point, but first, a synopsis of the story. This folk play by Habib Tanbir is based on a well-known folk tale of Rajasthan, 
that was first written by renowned Indian Rajasthani author Vijaydan Deta, also known as BG. Later, Sam Menegal also made it a film category where Tabib Hanbir acted too. Now, what is the story about? While evading the police, Chorandas meets a guru and a, as finance swears to him that he will never eat from a gold plate, lead a procession in his honor, become a king or marry a princess. All of which he considers to be a remote possibilities for him. Later, his guru adds a fifth Satnami one. Never tell a lie. He then embarks on his life's journey, which takes him to a kingdom where the course of events makes him famous. Eventually, he is offered the position of political power, which he must decline. Later, he charms the local princess Kalabhuti, who then makes a marriage proposal to him in accordance with his promises to his guru he declines to do so as he is executed he serves as an example of the paradox that is a part of human existence and makes it impossible for both the truthful and seeker of truth to live honestly that is the spiritual question that has been stamped on social purview again if we take dramaturgic qualities and character study in this play, we will meet this criterion. Here is the mixture of modern and folk theatre. The thematic complexity and its art of presentation is modern, but where the folk theatre or folk performances has been introduced, the use of coda, songs, characters, everything is in projection of social realities and we must be stunned to see that how beautifully Tanvid has exhibited these things. I, I rather prefer you before start listening to this video lecture. I advise you to watch this drama dramatic performance before you start listening to this. There are plenty of them on YouTube. However, I recommend this drama by All India Radio Voice and you can also watch Sam Benningle's film. Uh, both of these two are interesting reading. What a diverse world we live in. Men of principle can be found among the thieves, liars and scoundrels. There are lawbreakers as well as lawmakers. While there are saints, and so Nazis. There are also somewhat motivated by greed. A few of the people are there. Although there are intelligent men, we can easily trick them. Despite the fact that some people are wealthy, they are actually the poorest. The landlord had a poor heart, as do other rich people. He is unable to give one kilogram to someone in need. As we proceed in, into the drama Charunda Chor, we can see all these things happening in front of us to show the realities of this world. Some people appear to be poor, but they are actually quite wealthy. Peasants and other low income individuals have generous hearts. As a result, a remarkable series of opposites is woven in this particular drama. And that is the formation of the overall theme of this play. As has been mentioned, the play contains both truth and lie. Now, people who deceive others frequently have a compassionate side as well. Contradictions and paradoxes in society and human nature are revealed and portrayed through the dramatic lens of the play's theme and character. And as a student, we have to dive deep into the character studies of this particular play. 
Now, as I have told you, the dialogues are never written. It has been a continuous overflow from the dramatic performers. So we have to seek the, the truest message in um, as being delivered through multiple languages, multiple linguistic varieties. But um, even though the truth or the very line of uh, thematic unity is there and that's the modern theater and that's the exact performances that theater goers often experience in a realistic drama. Chorondas, the play's alleged hero or anti-hero, is a thief who steals golden plates. He is constantly being pursued by a police officer. In fact, the drama begins with that chase. He robs poor farmers and steals jewelry from a wealthy merchant's wife. And to make matters worse, he breaks into the temple and takes whatever he can. He does not exhibit any fear as he accepts the five coins from the queen's treasure. Chorundas still a poor person's possession, but he also freely gives him the sattu, the food. He is supposed to run away after robbing the particular wife of a wealthy person. Chorundas, however, returns her jewelry because he cannot bear to see a woman in tears. Generally speaking, a Munim steals when he ought to be guarding the royal treasury. After being discovered and kicked out of the court, the thief Chorundas refers him as a thief. Now, being a thief, he is referring other to be a thief and that two thieves and its meaning are interchangeably very interesting. This is paradox and it holds a lot of interest. The opportunity exists for Chorundas to marry a queen and take the throne. To be true to his word, he declines though. That is very unlike a thief. The queen struggles to balance her responsibilities as a monarch with those of her subjects. He has to protect herself or her image and that's why Chorundas Cho is being hanged. Again, uh, stealing and giving go hand in hand in Chorundas situation or Chorundas characteristics. He is a thief and people don't typically think of Roberts as being kind. They are supposed to run, carrying what they can, but Chorundas never does that. Instead, he steals first and then comes back. For instance, as uh, was previously explained, he yells, Are Satu, only Satu, after taking Satu from a destitute peasant in um, route to market. Oh, Satuala, come here, come on back, don't be scared, sit down. Let's share this, like brothers. Why did Chorundas use? Chorundas is not a thief. Even the chorus repeats this line. So here, the general understanding of the thief or the meaning of the thief is extended. In the other instance, a terrible famine left the village without even a single grain of food for three days and the peasant was unable to feed his children. He went up, he went up to the uh, landlord and begged for arms but in spite of giving him a single grain of food, the landlord misbehaved badly and drove him out. Now Chorundas here plays as a Robin Hood. Chorundas and the peasant disguise themselves and enter the landlord's home with the aid of Rath dancers. Everybody was busy and here the folk dancers and introductions of the 
Chhattisgarh is there. Rice sacks were stolen while the landlord and his servants were dancing and enjoying themselves. After that, they gave the rice to each villagers. Chalandaj is not a thief as at that point. The chorus chanted because the landlord is unquestionably a bigger thief than Chalandaj and that is the message. So, being a thief, Chalandaj steals at night because it is his dharma. dharma. But the landlord robbed the underprivileged in broad delight. The landlord makes a lot of money by sucking the blood of commoners. But he never gives a single grain of corn to the underprivileged. Isn't it a greater thief? Chalandas, on the other hand, rob the rich and give the money to the poor. And this Robin Hood style attitude is seldom seen. When he robs a wealthy merchant's wife, it is expected that he will flee with all the loot. But Chalandas is unable to witness her sobbing and he quickly returns. And he quickly gives her back whatever he has stolen. A wealthy Nandagao merchant woman walks onto the stage and her entire body is adorned with jewelry. Chalandas catch a glimpse of the bulky jewelry. He then devises a scheme to steal the jewelry. He informs her that Chote Babu is critically ill. He will only take medicine from his Didi. He will only take medicine from his Didi. So, so the woman asks Chalandas by saying that she is Chote Babu's Bhabi. Chalandas insists that uh, she must accompany him as there is no time to be wasted. He is on the verge of death. So, the episode continues. The woman readily go with him. After walking a few steps, Chalanda stops. He frightens her by saying that a man was attacked there just the other day. He suggests she should uh, unrobe uh, all the ornaments and put it in his gamcha. The woman goes uh, like that and the woman is frightened and he and she does so. In the meantime, she confesses that the jewelry is from Raigar and the jeweler's name is Ramlal. Then Chalandas ordered the woman to hand them over to him for safety. The woman refuses to give it. Chalandas snatches it. The woman calls him a rog and starts crying. She curses him. And Chalandas obviously got melted and she returns her jewelry. Now, as the story continues, we find that Chalandas unintentionally takes five bows to Guru. They claim that he will never be a king, never command an elephant procession, never marry a queen and never eat from a golden plate. Additionally, he promises to never lie again. Now, on the one hand, he is not ready to abjure stealing, which he calls his dharma. On the other hand, he pledges to remain truthful. He continues to steal without a doubt, but he also honors his promise to change and become a truthful man. Now, that truth, that seeker of truth becomes Charandas. And that search for Satya, as we find in Koda singing Satnam, 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 page the truth, it is there. There is nothing better. Praise the Guru, no one greater, who alone brings down to us the divine nectar of truth. A thief is typically thought to be egocentric, mean and selfish. But when something unusual happens, 
it is Chalandas Chor. Chalandas learned that a new minister would be visiting the treasury. His guru and he devised a strategy. He also enlisted the assistance of the Havildar. Flowers and garlands were brought by the Havildar. The guru welcomed the new minister by presenting garlands in a way that prevented him from seeing anything. Following, following that incident, the guru then hired the minister to open a new uh, shops and markets. And in the interim, Chalandas obtained the royal chest ski from the Munim while posing as the new minister. His assured demeanor duped both the Munim and the sentinels. To let the queen know that she has been robbed, Chalandas opened the chest and only took five gold coins. That is the great gesture. Chalandas then handed over the key to the Munim and exited the building. He robs the queen not to enhance his fortunes but to make a presence. To make his presence felt. Later on, time tests him. He is given the opportunity of leading a procession, marrying a queen, eating from a golden plate and becoming a king. We find that he is adamant about doing none of them. Had there been any other common man, he could have pounced upon the golden opportunity without caring for future consequences. But he denied all these things and embraces the punishment. Chorandas stole six things in entirety of the story we find. First, he stole a golden flatter. Then he stole coins from the Satuala. Then he stole jewelry from a rich merchant's wife, but later he returned it to her. Then he stole sacks from uh, the landlord. Then he stole five gold coins from the royal chest. At last, he stole the heart of the queen. So, entire of the process of the stealing, ultimately, the greater treasure or the greatest treasure he find the heart of the queen. Interestingly, the queen happens to be young and pretty and she also offers to pay up all penances. Do penance if necessary. We can, we can hold an atonement ceremony and gather all the ascetics and holy men to fulfill all the rituals necessary to absolve you. Charundas is expected to surrender, but no, he is very far. This explains the nature of the paradox. He would rather die than succumb to all these life's pleasures and pressures. The play also addresses the conflict between spiritualism and materialism. This is clear from the guru and priest's behavior. On the one hand, the guru and the priest stand in for religion. Guru is regarded as a man of moderation, a man who has forsaken all the material concerns, a man who is selfless and charitable. But the guru in this play also asks his followers to give up their vices, yet he is a man of this world. He is more concerned with the donation, with money than with salvation. And these things are happening irrespective of any religion. This is demonstrated by the song he sings non-stop, which says, Give the Guru his due. Is it salvation you want? Just give the Guru his due. The priest is also supposed to be a man of pious nature. He is expected to be well versed in the Vedas. The priest in the play does perform ceremonies. But despite reading numerous religious texts, 
he does not become a wise man. The mask that Charandas is wearing prevents him from seeing through. His heart leaps when he sees a basket full of golden ornaments. He is not here motivated by any humanitarian instinct. His eyes are set simply upon the precious and those precious things is the only reason why Charandas is being requested to stay here. In conclusion, Charandas store can be described as a remarkable play that is drenched in paradox. The play is complex and interestingly in part due to these paradoxes. Tanved is attempting to demonstrate that perhaps nothing is final and nothing is unbreakable. Even though the storyline is from Pog original Rajasthan story, but here the treatment is Tanved's unique. Perhaps uh, uh, the truth becomes lie and lie becomes truth. That is the conflict that continuing uh, throughout the play. The preserver turns into an offender, the offender turns into a preserver, meaning never remain static. It is determined by the context. Second, because of the inherent irony that these paradoxes possess, the reader are also surprised and amused by them. One anticipates one thing, but the reality is very different and unexpected. The play is a delight, put an enlightening read due to this place, constant switching from one meaning to the next. In addition to being tragic, Charanda's death is also ironic. And that irony, if we extend, can be greater, like that of Gandhiji, like that of Jesus Christ, like that of Socrates. For the sake of truth, Charanda sacrificed his life. He is an ordinary person, even there is some complication. He swore he wouldn't lie. His honesty elevates him from the rank of small-time village thief to that of a beloved hero. He also honored by the queen when he told the truth about the thief of five coins. He was killed because of his honesty. When the queen requested him not to tell people what happened between them, Charandas did not agree to tell a lie. Charandas did not go to uh, the convenient way of saying yes to the queen. The queen is a politician. In addition to a being of a current kind of a tyrant, there was no way she could let him go free. As soon as she knew that the populace would get to know, she feared her position. To preserve her honor, she therefore gave the order to kill him. The death of Charandas presents a struggle between, in that case, in that particular case, the struggle between the state and a simple man, between truth and a lie. Such individuals have cons consistently been eliminated throughout the history and we can find out the same is pattern is being repeated here. Now Tanbid's treatment of this particular classic is that he makes the drama a, a kind of a treatment in close encounter. A fact that has been presented in front of us like that of a happening of our own life. So that is the Tanvid's treatment of theatricality or that theatrical element has been elevated by it. So I appreciate your concern of reading this particular drama in a new look, in a new way. And obviously, uh, the theatre performances is unique to interpret the law of living. Even you can find out so much complications in your way of understanding a particular fact, a particular judgment. But I request you to go through this drama if possible in your own eye, in front of a theatre, in front of the stage, you can find out and enjoy it. But you can also watch many of the clips available on YouTube by which you can make 
a understanding of the theatrical elements that has been used by Habib. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel to get this kind of post and further. Bye-bye. Thank you.